Who has one to kind of talk about? And then I'll end with my most important thought of the day. So who has one? Raise, raise your hand. Come up here. And to say your name and say what's the kind of thought leadership you want to do. Okay. My name is Julie Newsom. The thought leadership I want to do is eliminate veterans unemployment. Okay, so eliminate veterans unemployment. You don't want unemployed veterans. And what, what is your relation to that field or expertise, or are you a veteran yourself? Sure. So I'm a uh, suburb veteran. I help uh, all veterans that are in, all people that are in the military get jobs before they leave the military. So our goal is by 2021, no one will leave the military without a job already. And okay. Great. So, okay, so how can he have thought leadership in this area where he has some experience on it, people are living, leaving the military, they don't want to be unemployed. First of all, what's, how can we add a time component? What, what's a great time for him to establish his thought leadership? Are there certain times of year, periods of times where what his, he wants to be a thought leader when it's super relevant? When would that be? Veterans Day, right? Okay, so Veterans Day. What, what else besides Veterans Day? There's other Memorial Day. Memorial Day is another. There's other. So Independence Day too. There, there's periods of time where his message naturally wants to be communicated and wants to spread. Why? Because everyone's talking about it. It's relevant. So maybe as part of the strategy, we can add that time component for something to to launch. Okay, so that's one thing. What else? What else could we do? Where? Where? Would his message be super relevant? Like geographically, where? Washington. Oh, okay, Washington. Wait, why, why, why South and Midwest? Our recruitment is very heavy. It's one of the most popular uh, jobs for people who are lower middle income and that's why a lot of my high school peers want to Okay, so areas where there. What about areas around bases, military? Places there. Can he see that there? When you look at the stories of like, let's say, influencing, look at the story of like an Airbnb, right? Airbnb got its start because they went to a lot of political conventions where they know a lot of people would need to stay in places and they made sure people at those conventions knew about what they were doing, right? So one, we add a time dimension. Two, we add a local dimension. Okay, three, where else can we go to have other influencers and others? All those who are already thought leaders, how can he Halo off them. Where, where could he go? Who are those kind of influencers and thought leaders? Military related, where might, where might they be? Unemployment. Conferences, conventions. Okay, conferences and conventions. Yes, that's true. But where else? Where else might there be a congregation of those who are influencers that he could relate to? Okay, so VFWs, other places, other places where if he's going to gather this force or something like that, if he's going to do that, where there's like-minded folks who are already there. So if he's going to do that, maybe he can go to not only the individual VFW, but like the National Veteran and Foreign War Organization, other places where, and then if he goes to them, how can he have something that he needs that only he uniquely has that then positions him as a thought leader there, right? What can he do there? What other dimensions could he do? I think he can be a he can be a convener of um, you know like uh, finding <laughs> employers, big employers that have veteran hiring practices, and kind of do a best of series with big brands. Okay, so he, you've come at this from the veteran side, but there's the whole other side, right? There's the employment side, right? He wants no unemployment. So what could he do with employers? He's in an area with a lot of big tech companies. What might be possible there to do things on that, which is maybe he has to have, maybe that's the article or the blog post or the, the maybe it's the TV interview that's time to Veterans Day, talking about, hey, there's a, there's a vast untapped wealth of talent and ability and potential leaders that, Hey, Google, if you're recruiting people and you want good people and you want to, 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 to know every place where there's a good pocket of people, you're not taking advantage of this. You're missing out. Maybe he comes at it from that side. Yeah. Okay, and, and I would love to package that up, like that tax credit, to be simple, surprising, and, and significant. 
So maybe it's like that thought leadership is like, did you know Google could, set, could save, I'm going to make up the number, $4.7 million per month um, simp and have a more skilled workforce simply by t taking this one extra step? Right? Can we package it up with like a number? It's a big number. We have a pitch at PR Hacker we call a big ass number pitch. It's newsworthy because it's a big ass number, right? And so can we package that up in something that's like simple, surprising, it's super significant. They want a good workforce. They would love to maybe save some money while they do that. Absolutely. I love that as a surprising tip. And so what we're looking for here is other examples of your expertise and tips that are not immediately obvious, obvious but totally make sense, right? So it sort of says, like for instance, maybe you'd come in with a story and says, what if I told you I had a place where people spent years working together, coordinated as a team, and then had to understand the, the responsibility and, and, um, of all of their actions, and had to do incredibly complex logistical things and execute them with precision. What if I told you I had a place where people learned that for years and years, and I'm going to give you unique access to recruit at this place? What if I told you that? And oh, by the way, it's the military and it's our nation's veterans, and you can get a tax credit for it. right? Can I package it that way? So those are all the ways that we can make it simple, surprising, significant, establish that, and then and, and, and give you a voice for that. Any other last ideas in this one? OK. What's your name again? Yuli. Yuli. Give Yuli a round of applause. OK. Good. Maybe, maybe, maybe time for one more. Anyone else? Yeah? OK. 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 So, OK. I, I like the website. OK. Explain, here, explain what it is that you want to be a thought leader about. So basically, I would like to help people that want to reach a higher level to get a coaching or an accountability partner that they can relate to and get better in health, relationships, or career, or goals they have. OK, so, so the, the website, it's, it's yolocan.com. That's, that's super positive. Not only is it YOLO, YOLO CAN. I like it. I like it. Um, and so basically, you're a co you establish as a coach on health, career, and relationships, right? So, so you'd be an expert in those areas, and, and kind of you have here the accountability buddy. Is that right? It would be more like people that create a network, so people can, can share their knowledge in some areas. And I would just create a platform so people can help each other. OK. So it's a platform to help each other. So if his areas are health, career, and relationships, how can he get super specific? How can he get his thought leadership? Those are, those are big areas. So what aspect of that is something that's timely, relevant, right now, that deals with, let's say, what's that? New Year's. Everyone's having resolutions, like I want to get to the next level next year. OK, new, so New Year's, New Year's resolution. So you're saying health, career, and relationships. That sounds like a list of people's New Year's resolutions, right? Like health, I want to lose 10 pounds. Career, oh, I want to get, get that promotion. Relationships, I want to have more meaningful time with my friends and my family and people I care about. So what can we do now to accelerate him in terms of the New Year, people making resolutions? What could he do quickly to establish his thought leadership because January 1 is not that far away? How's he going to do it in terms of New Year's resolutions? I resolve to end my office romance that's causing me a lot of stress. OK. You, you're saying, I resolve to end my office romance that's causing me a lot of stress. OK. So well, here, that's a funny example. But what about this? What if he's going to go to, um, it could be relationship-oriented outlets. And with a story that about, let's add another time dimension, which is office relationships that start at the holiday party. <laughs> like what you should do or not, and, and think about that in terms of your overall life and balance. What to do, and, and, and not as like a sordid affair in the, you know, in the closet or something like that. But like, what if you meet someone meaningful, but oh, it's like I really think they're great, and, and I want to explore that, but I work with them. What are the things? that you have to think about, maybe we, we do it there. What else for like New Year's resolutions? It could be something that he dials into. What, tell me, what, what, what is your expertise now? What are your credentials in this now? I'm mostly hard developing hardware, like laser, but I've been doing it <laughs> like a lot of my free time. <laughs> like a kind of sharing all the personal steps I've been following since I moved to the state. And I thought that people would benefit. And I've, I've met some wonderful people, like have friends that have helped me in all these steps. 
So I thought that each of us could help other friends in some of these areas and receive help from people who are around us. Okay, so if someone that has uh, and, and, and you know not a lot of background in the field, he's looking for ways that quickly he can be established as a coach, an expert in these areas. Uh, yes. What lasers are oh. concentrated and very straight. So the idea is that hey, I can help you focus and gather your, marshal your energy so you can actually power through your barriers and break. Okay, so, so maybe there actually is something there that's like metaphorical and symbolic about like what like you know the practice, what like laser engineering can teach you about focus, right? And how to focus like a laser on your New Year's resolution goals. Lessons from um, you know lessons from the engineers or something like that. Sure. Yeah. Behind. Yes. Okay, so maybe he could look at different parts of the world from a topical point of view. Can we connect that to his actual experience? If you're an engineer, it sounds like you're a developer. So maybe there's something interesting too. If, he, if we're going to move him from engineering to like relationship space, sounds like a big jump. But maybe it could be done because what about something interesting and in a survey of the dating habits of engineers in Silicon Valley and San Francisco. How often are they going out? Are they just swiping right or left? You know, are they? Uh, it's a show about that. <laughs> it's a show about that. So, but, but would that be interesting to us to move him from engineering to relationships? Because that could be an article that would be fascinating if there were survey results for a. TechCrunch for another place, but then also you could maybe move that into more relationship-oriented publications because hey, a lot of people now, it's like a lot of kids aspire to be the next Mark Zuckerberg. It's kind of like the, the new thing to aspire to do. And so, what does that mean about for that kind of group in terms of relationships? So maybe there's a way to connect connect that. Any other things? I, I think you know the idea of is there an article, a podcast, something else that quickly puts him into this space? that he can cite and to get those three examples, that'd be very powerful. Any other last thoughts? So, so he's, making, he's building a platform. So examples, uh, early wins of you know, two people who have really changed their lives from interacting off of this platform. OK, so examples are things like kind of the rule of three applied to the platform. If we can have three really good examples, that could, that could be as well. Your name again is, is Joaquin? Joaquin, yeah. Joaquin, give Joaquin a round of applause. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, is there a third and final one? Uh, yes. And Alex. Uh, VR, yeah? OK. Um, hey there, my name is Alex. And we're building a virtual reality game with a deep blockchain integration. So it's a game and a real world economy. And actually, I'm here to ask the community if anyone got a gaming experience and got a sense in blockchain and want to help me out with a project, that would be awesome. But let's play <laughs> brainstorm and be an authority in the space. OK, so, so he's also taking the opportunity to recruit potential uh, people. That's very good. Very good as well. But OK, so it's VR related to, to, to gaming. What kind of games? It's a mecha shooting game. So you are in a giant robot, you shoot stuff, and all your game load is on a blockchain. OK, and, and, and what do you want to be a thought leader in? Uh, in a decentralized gaming solutions. OK, so he wants to be a thought leader in, de oh, and that makes sense, in decentralized gaming solutions, because there's not like a central control. It's like a, a blockchain like um, Bitcoin or something like that. It's, exactly. distrib it's distributed, right? So, so if you got like a LinkedIn VR and you got a Facebook VR, you can have one head that's used to both in LinkedIn and Facebook someday in the future. OK, so that's an interesting topic because you have two things that are kind of like trending right now, which is one, obviously VR is, is, is really, really hot. And two, um, questions about the future of Bitcoin, like a little bit of uncertainty, people aren't sure. So how can he merge on those two things? What kind of events, developments could he piggyback on that would be already getting news that he could insert himself into the conversation? Yeah? Currency manipulation. Currency manipulation. How, 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 how so? Okay, so there's, there's big headlines there. That's that's one one side. Is there something 
closer related to maybe the games, right? Or something, okay, that's kind of the, the sort of Bitcoin side. Maybe we could say, I mean, there could be something on like, hey, the future of Bitcoin is actually um, not necessarily currency. I mean, that could be a story, but what else is related to games? Yeah. Okay so, okay, so certainly he could do that and it could actually be, it's this interesting idea of is decentralized gaming the future of, you know, of the future of fun or something like that. I kind of like that phrase, like the future of fun sounds like. Sounds, sounds, That's a good one. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so there's that. What about, what else? So if he's playing in VR, we call this a Goliath pitch at PR Hacker. Who are the Goliaths of the VR space? I mean, the giants, the people who get covered. How can he latch on to that? Okay, Samsung, companies, right? Is it like Oculus, other places that are getting covered? So can he do something on the future of VR and actually talk about to what extent people want decentralized options and actually talk about, okay, on the new release of the next version of Oculus, he's pitching all of those media, all those kind of places, to talk about the implications and that decentralization is the next form of what we're going to deserve in gaming and that we've already seen examples of that where now people are playing and sharing playing with people all across the world. They're filming videos of themselves doing it and say, hey, the future of this is actually decentralization. So we can piggyback on all of those news announcements from anyone who's in the VR space. Um, any other ideas? What's, do, you, do you have, a, do you have a, 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 a game of your own? Do you have something in mind for that? Uh, yes, I got a game right here on my cell phone. I got a VR headset with me to show you guys. Uh, we, we got pretty good idea. We got the great content. We just need to market it and bring it to market. Okay, so the other part, I think you said it was a shoot 'em up game or something like yeah. that where you shoot things. So is there a way that we can talk about um, that in the context of what's going on right now. I mean, a lot of questions about in terms of, um, you know, what is, you know, what are kids taking away from that? Is there, I mean, even an issue like, like this is actually a case where maybe not necessarily negative news about decentralization might not, might not even be good for what right. you do. And a certain kind of thing when like parents are concerned about something, it's actually good for marketing to kids. Maybe there's a question there is like, are, so you could raise the question even, you know, are decentralized games something, something parents should worry about? Right? It's something that can generate something. Now, if your market is not going to be parents anyway, and you're trying to make this a relevant issue, and you want to be the thought leader on that, actually something controversial could be really powerful there. And maybe you want to say, people ask the question. What oftentimes we like to do at Peer Hacker is we put a question mark at the end of pitches when we're making a bold claim. And something that we don't know if we can entirely back up. We'll put a question mark out of, out of it. You know, you know, is Liz Baggett the greatest publicist in the world? No question. question mark. No question. No question. But we're making a bold claim. We put a question mark, and it raises the issue. But in his case, even something that's a controversial topic that all of a sudden says decentralized games, now everyone's talking about it. That's something where he can claim the thought leadership space very quickly. That could accelerate. All right, give Alex a round of applause. So just to wrap up, um, I, I, I want to kind of wrap up uh, kind of with like my final thought of the day. And, and, and by the way, if you have other questions, um, my, my email address is there, ben at prhacker.com. I'm at Benjamin Kaplan. Um, would love to have you, you know, tweet out um, anything you learned today. Um, come ask any of the PR Hacker folks. A lot of them are in uh, yellow t-shirts. And certainly we can help you with any of your own thought leadership campaigns. Um, for your companies, your brands, for individual people too. Um, we love um, people who have something worthwhile to say and helping them find a, an audience um, to, to, to say those things. And let me end with kind of a final thought of the day. So today we learned kind of three steps. We said, one, think small to get big. So you don't go and think of these really huge things. Get narrow, get specific. Two, we actually said once you've done that, we want to um, find ways to create ideas that spread. So we want to be simple, surprising, and, and, and significant to spread those ideas. And finally, we want to find quick ways to amplify our authority. Right? We want to find ways that we can get that credential really, really fast. And the point I want to make is that to become a thought leader, it doesn't have to be this daunting task 
the thing that seems overwhelming, like, OK, I do these things. I do this blog. And like maybe five years from now, I see a result from that blog. Instead, look at simple little actions you can do today. Look at simple little things you can do to establish and expand on. And just like that red paper clip where you tread the paper clip for the pen, for the doorknob, for the generator, as you expand what you can do and your expertise, great things are attracted to you. So my hope for all of you is that you all become experienced collectors. And, you co and instead of collecting objects or things or gifts or baseball cards, you instead collect great experiences that expand upon your knowledge in profound ways. And when you do that, experience isn't measured just in years. I have 20 years in experience. It's measured in know-how. And to become a thought leader, to get more than you have, you must become more than you are. And that all starts with the little things you do each day and taking what you know and connecting them in little ways to things just a little bit beyond your comfort zone. So thank you all for coming. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I wish you that kind of success. Thank you.